Hi everybody, we're here today with Margot McDermott. We're so happy to have her here today to talk about various laws that we have in Illinois. And it's so good to have her here for our legislative series because we have been talking about the importance to understand new laws that are coming about in Illinois. So we have a new law in Illinois, Margot, that affects family law, and that's about life insurance. Have you heard about this one? Well, I'm gonna have some fun with you, Gwen. You've been Fine. asking me a lot of questions <laughs> about a lot of different bills, so let me ask you about this bill. Okay. What did we do in the Illinois General Assembly about life insurance this year? Well, what you did in Illinois is effective January 1, 2019. If you are divorced, and this is so important that everybody listen to this, if you get divorced and you leave your spouse on your life insurance policy, which a lot of people do, sometimes intentionally and sometimes just as a matter of default, you just don't get around to taking care of business and changing your life insurance beneficiaries. So now in Illinois is, is if you are divorced and you didn't change it, your spouse will lose those benefits so long as it's a non-ERISA based policy. Interesting, isn't it? That's really interesting. We've done a lot of work about insurance this year in terms of just making sure that these policies aren't sitting out there with, no, with insurance companies. Sure. Uh, reaping the benefit and keeping the money. Right. So, so this might be an action that goes for, further. It sounds so, like they made some provisions. They we, did. <laughs> and so if you do want to name your former spouse on your life insurance, it may be that your judgment for dissolution of marriage requires it because oftentimes you're required to have life insurance to secure right. maintenance. So that would be a reason. And in that case, your beneficiary designation would not be invalid. Or two, if you go to your life insurance company and you reaffirm it. So meaning I had a state farm policy, just to name an example, and I go and I sign that legislation or that beneficiary designation again, and I rename my former spouse, it's okay. You know, maybe I love my former spouse, I just can't live with them. <laughs> what do you think about that? We've seen a fair amount yeah, of that, haven't we? That. That's right, over the years, that's a possibility. So maybe that's the case, that would be okay. Or thirdly, you might have to leave your spouse as the trustee for the benefit of your minor children or children of the family. And so all of those would be exceptions to the bill. But instead of the life insurance just automatically passing to that former spouse when you didn't intend to do so, it seems that Illinois is cleaning that up. It seems so. like it, it puts insurance companies in a better position to understand where they need to be sending that money That's and correct. not guessing. But I also want to talk about one other provision because I think it's important and we try to make a distinction in our judgments for dissolution of marriage and a lot of people don't understand it. And that is we're talking about non-ERISA plans. So ERISA is the Employee Retirement right. in Income Security Act of 1974. And so what it provides for is if you have an employer sponsored plan that the employer is having through ERISA, that would not be covered. So if you didn't, you have a plan at work and it's not an individual policy, but it's an ERISA based policy, this law would not apply. And so that's very interesting is you have to make sure that you know what you're doing because you can also be in a small business. For example, at our firm, we have life insurance for our employees, but we just pay for it and it's not ERISA based, it's just a benefit. So it's real important that you're listening to understand that you're responsible to go and find out whether or not your plan is ERISA based or not, and then follow the provisions. Because if you mess this up, you could have an unintended beneficiary, and the default is, is that it'll go back to your estate. And then you know what happens? You end up in probate. So who wants to have that cost, right? And it might not be carrying out the intentions of either party. Right, that's correct. So recently, Margo, we just added estate planning because as part of family law, we've been doing divorce and family law. And just this month, we've added estate planning because we understand the importance of making sure that you take care of business, providing for what's going to happen to yourself, your spouse, your children, as well as dealing and caring for your elder parents. What a change we have in society going on. It's really complicated. It's complicated for people that do the work you do, and it's complicated for those of us in the General Assembly. Sure, absolutely. And it's complicated for the listeners who are out there and saying, what do I do? So if I could give everybody advice today, just in a general sense, you've got to have an insurance checkup. You have to have an yeah. estate plan checkup. You also have to look at your family law documents. You can't just get divorced and put your decree in the bedroom dresser drawer and forget about it for 10 years. Get it out, read it, because as we can see, people like Margot are out there trying to help implement changes that are good for everybody. Right. So we appreciate your time today. And if somebody wants to address issues of family law or anything relating to estate planning, can they reach out and talk to you? Absolutely. RepMcDermott.com. That's great. And if you need help, call us at Stirk Family Law. Have a great day.